listening to Second Wind with Joyce Buford, where women who are ready to expand their life adventure discover the tools to stop playing small and tap into the courage required to enjoy their Second Wind. Welcome. Welcome to Second Wind. I love every week that when you join me for this podcast, it is the reason that I created this. I am Joyce Buford and I am your host. Yes, this was created especially for you. I want to encourage you to play full out, but to do that, you first have to get to know who you are. So first, I wanted to push you toward that so you will hear some programs that are going to help you really open up and find your genius and then I wanted to inspire you to dream big don't settle for the easy stuff like a drive to Dallas drug fly to Europe make that dream big if that's your wish and then add to the inform you through my guests I I bring those people in so that they can inform you about where they have made their transition, how they've made their transition, and how it's changed their life. The information that you will hear today and on every podcast is from a woman that had, or a man who has transitioned, who has suffered, who has known pain, and has grown through it. So I'm so happy that you've chosen to be here because, you know, this is going to make your journey easier. And a little secret. This journey is much easier with connection and with support. So I welcome you here today. I am so excited about our guest today, but because I am convinced that her subject of health is affects every woman out there listening. Our bodies are different from men, so their bodies may not be affected, but let me tell you, we are definitely affected by what we put in our mouth and how it interacts with our gut. So we're going to talk to it. And my authority today is Erin Carey. She is a certified integrative nutrition coach, teacher, writer, podcaster, and self-proclaimed brain health nerd. She taught English for 11 years before pursuing her wellness business full-time. She is a wife, mother of three, and the owner of the nutrition coaching company, Sparking Wholeness. As a survivor of bipolar disorder, Erin knows firsthand how suffering from a chronic illness can infiltrate every area of life. She has spent the last seven years coaching others and learning for herself what holistic health truly means and that comes in the form of nutrition for mind body and soul so welcome Erin thank you so much thank you so much for having me on the show I am a big fan of your show and I get so much inspiration from your guests so it's an honor to be here oh thank you well you're talking about a subject today that I really believe most women are suffering with in some mm-hmm. form, some yeah. form, really do. I know I've suffered and still do in many of the things that we'll talk about today. But I wanted to first talk about a subject that it, it's getting more popular. People are not, it doesn't have the sting that it once had mental illness. You talk mm-hmm. about mental illness and most of us have some sort of pain around our emotions in Mm. our life Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a gray area is that considered mental illness or is it more of a triggered effect than just emotions oh that's such oh I love the way you even just went right there because that's that's part of the problem right is that we categorize mental illness as separate from our physical bodies as separate from our emotions or it's just I think a lot of people think of just any kind of an illness as a waffle and we have these separate compartments. Well, the brain goes here and then you have the thyroid over here and the, you know, reproductive hormones over here, but really everything is so interconnected. And so 
mental illness is physical illness. And so for sure, we can have triggers that are emotional triggers, <laughs> things mm -hmm. that happen to us that are traumas or, you know, grief or, or whatever it may be. But then we also have environmental triggers that are, you know, whether it's food or it has to do with another illness in your body and our bodies. And I always like to say, our bodies are always on our side trying to protect us. So even the negative quote, negative or unpleasant symptoms that we have is really just our body trying to get our attention and trying to regain balance. And that's, I mean, that was so the case for me and my mental health for so many years is my body was just trying to regain balance. And I see many, many women, and I, I do have some male clients and it's the same thing right now. We have an epidemic of mental illness and the old tools that were useful for a really long time and still can be useful are not working as well. We can't, we need new tools. We need more tools. And so that's really what I focus on is what else can we do? can we do to support mental health? Because what we do to support mental health and our brains will support every other aspect of our body. So when you say mental illness, are you talking about trauma, depression, um, bipolar? Are you talking about those specifically? Yeah, all, all the above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say the most common right now are depression and anxiety. You know, and they, and we do have a really good diagnosis criteria for it. You know, you go to a psychiatrist, you meet the list and, you know, you go through each, you know, whatever the, the symptoms are and like, yep, yeah, you're definitely struggling with depression, but sometimes it goes deeper than that because sometimes depression can be caused by a lack of, you know, good vitamin D absorption in your body, or you're not absorbing B vitamins, or maybe sometimes you're getting anxiety because your blood sugar is out of balance. And so yes. there, there are a lot of things that we can look at besides just a list of symptoms of, oh, I can't concentrate and life isn't enjoyable and suicidal ideation. I mean, 100% for sure. If that, if that is the case, you need to, to seek help, you know, mm -hmm. and, and from somebody who is trained and who's an expert in the field. But I think for a lot of people, we have these situational um, experiences with brief anxiety or panic, or we have trauma flashbacks. That's a big deal. I mean, and trauma is stored in our body. It's not just stored in our right. brain, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right. So is there something like, let's take depression. There's been, I mean, just because of our environment this year, there's been so mm. much depression that mm -hmm. some people may be in depression they've never been in depression yeah. before but but because of isolation because of needing to stay away we're older citizens or we're sick citizens mm -hmm. and we can't really get out and engage so uh what could we do surely you can't just immediately call up a psychology psychiatrist and say i need to come see you isn't there something we can like uh baby steps that we could take to start looking at that might be causing adding to the frustration other than yes. you could share your phone number that would help yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it is so individualized right like there are so yeah. many different things different people have different triggers but I think most people right now the first thing that I can think of that's really causing a lot of and I'll just call it brain dysregulation um is is our obsession with phones, cell phones, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. Notifications, oh. social media, the news. I mean, fear is inflammatory. It's also yes. addictive, you know, yes. and our brain can get stuck in this addictive pattern of reading fearful articles and reading the latest statistics on whatever is happening in the world, because, you know, and, and any, the people who are running the news networks, they know that we don't want the happy stories <laughs> that doesn't feed our brain in the way that the fear does. The fear really right. does feed our brain and puts us in this negative mindset. And it, it causes, it actually does cause inflammation in our entire body. So it's not just affecting how we feel mentally, but it's causing an inflammatory cascade that's even creating leaky gut that's causing intestinal permeability. So now what we're eating, we're not absorbing well. So we're not getting our nutrients to develop the neurotransmitters that we need to calm down. So it's just kind of this revolving door that's happening. And I think that's, that's a big one right now. I mean, just the division, you know, it, 
we know that when our brains are in fight or flight, we can't activate our prefrontal cortex, you know, and that's where we make good decisions. That's where we show empathy. That's where we can connect with other humans, or maybe even be open to another way of thinking about something. But if we're in fear mode, if we're in fight or flight, that's not going to happen. And so many of us, we're engaging in activities and habits that are keeping us in fight or flight. So whether it's watching the news all the time or clicking, you know, checking your phone for all of the notifications on social media. Oh, what did my friend say about this? What? Oh, well, I don't like that. So I'm going to write back and we're going to get into this heated debate, whatever that just keeps perpetuating this fight or flight cycle, you know, I mean, and, and that even our food, the food we eat can keep us in fight or flight. So it's really, but the first thing is really that mindset of getting out of negativity, getting out of fear, monitoring your use of social media, what, what you put in your brain really does make an impact on what your body absorbs because your body doesn't know the difference between running from a tiger like we used to a long, long time ago, right? Or the constant notifications of there is danger in the world. Our bodies don't know the difference. Our body just knows I'm stressed. I'm freaking out. So now I'm creating inflammation to protect you from the stressor, but that's just causing more mental illness. I mean, it's, it's, it's really all very deeply connected and I mean, that would be going back to answer your question. That would be my first thing there. There are a lot of other things that I would talk to some about, but the first one is what are you putting in your brain? Right. Yeah. There's, I, I have noticed and discussed with several people, the increase of anger in our yeah. environment, just, I mean, just walk into the grocery store and somebody can fly off the handle sometimes. And it's, it's, you know, I, I have a tendency when I'm driving sometime trying to get out on the street, I lose my patience and I just hop out there, you know, <laughs> I'm in my car and I just hop and I swear that guy sped up. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, he's after me. But I do think uh, that this is a condition that we're all in right now because we're angry, we're out of Mm. control, we cannot control our environment like we used to or how we've grown up. So in a situation like that, I love the idea of just turn off that TV. And we live in a neighborhood environment that has one of these communication systems. Mm. Oh, turn that thing off. It Mm. is a lot of waste. So choosing that, but... um, Give us another one. I mean, the mindset, I so agree. And you've got to work on something positive in your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's my first one. I mean, cause it really, because once your mindset is in a more positive place, then you're able to actually make other changes because if we're wow. in fight or flight, we can't make changes. We can't make good decisions, you know? Yeah. And so, point. yeah. Point. So I, I really start there and start with managing stress with breathing. You know, I know you've talked to many experts on meditation and breath work, and that is so important because it brings us back to being centered and grounded. And so mm-hmm. I really encourage for people to, whether it's yoga, meditation, breath work. There are so many free apps that can help with that. That's something that I, I, it's the hardest thing for people to do, but I think it's the most beneficial. And then once we do that again, that's just going to continue to regulate our brain. And then we can look at, okay, what, what are your habits that are keeping your brain overactivated? Sometimes that's excess sugar. Sometimes it's excess refined carbs. Sometimes we're just not eating enough protein and we get our neurotransmitters from protein. If we are not eating and digesting protein, we are not making serotonin. We're not making GABA, which we need for calming. We're not making, you know, any of these other neurotransmitters we need to calm the anxiety, get our mood back into an elevated place. And so eating protein, I'm really big on that monitoring, like I mentioned before the blood sugar. And that just means, you know, if you are going to have a carb, whether it's a, you know, a healthy carb, you know, people that, that can mean different things to different people. (laughs) But if you're going to have, make sure you have a good fiber content too, because it really decreases that whole blood sugar roller coaster ride that a lot of us get on. And it feels like panic attacks for many, many people. And so learning to monitor blood sugar and alcohol. I mean, I hate to say it because I do love a good cocktail or glass of wine, but I think that 
it, it's important to remember that that's a neurotoxin, you know, and that is gut disrupting. It, it um, can cause permeability to the gut lining and it causes mm-hmm. all sorts of inflammation in our body. And mm-hmm. alcohol use has skyrocketed since the start of this pandemic. You know, a lot of people, we just have happy hour every day because, well, <laughs> what else can you do, you know, (laughs) or get the cocktails to go, which we were able to do in Texas for the first time ever. I think that was kind of crazy, you know? And so I just monitoring that and going, okay, what are my coping mechanisms? Is it sugar? Is it carbs? Is alcohol? Am I doing this as a, in a calm way to calm this anxiety? Because really what it's doing, is just feeding it and it's making, making it worse. Oh, we think it's calming it, but it's not. (laughs) Oh, that's tricky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really firing it up. Well, I always like, just for me, I'm just, I realize the grounding, how important that is Mm -hmm. through, you know, through your meditation. But in my neighborhood, I live in a a neighborhood, all homes. And so there's tons of people walking. Mm -hmm. And, And I am amazed when I can get out there and, you know, I have a new puppy. So she's, she's pulling me along now to get out and walk more and um it's it's really gorgeous to get out and walk and it it is it just calms you it Mm -hmm. just brings with it air you're breathing you have to breathe to walk Mm -hmm. and it's just so magical and sometimes we overlook that it's just being now that it's fall it's much easier to do i'm a night walker however Oh, you are. Yeah. It's this time of year. I like walking in the evenings too. You know, we get yeah. really pretty sunsets. The air is kind of starting to cool down a little bit. I don't know. Recently it's been hotter than I would like it to be, but yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, what, is there another one you would give us? Oh, well, I mean, you just mentioned it and you threw it out there. Movement. <gasps> Movement is so key. And you know, what's interesting is I'm finding with a lot of the women I work with who are younger, they are over exercising. And what they're doing oh. is they're putting their body into fight or flight on purpose <laughs> and they're not able to recover. They're just going back into their stressful life, you know? And so I think that that's, it's finding that balance of movement that works for you. That doesn't stress your body out, you know, training for for a marathon, that might be too stressful for you. If you have three little kids at home and you're also trying to do intermittent fasting, and you're also trying to eat healthy and be part of the PTA. And, you know, I mean, all of these things that, that are characteristic of women in their twenties and their thirties. And then yes. when we get into our forties, we've got all these hormones going on <laughs> that complicate things. And so movement really has to be tailored to the individual and where they are in their life. But walking, what you mentioned, that is my absolute number one favorite thing for anybody. It's so beneficial for detoxification. It's beneficial for blood sugar. Again, just a a 10 minute walk after a meal can Uh be so impactful for helping with good blood sugar levels. And then yoga, I'm a big fan of yoga and soft, gentle movement, because some of us, we don't, again, we don't have a way to shut our brains off. And that can be a way to just practice breathing, moving slowly. You're still using your body weight. You're still using a lot of strength and, and a lot of core strength. And so you're getting, you know, for the people who really need a workout, you're getting a workout, but it's just slower and it's anti-inflammatory. Whereas some of these hardcore workouts that women think they have to do to maintain, maintain a certain size, it's actually putting them into a pro-inflammatory state. And that's what we Mm -hmm. don't want. That's just going to, again, these are things that are feeding anxiety. They're feeding depression. They're feeding hormone issues. Um, Seeing a lot of hormone imbalances these days, a lot of autoimmune illnesses, and we're just a stressed out people. And until we can get control of our stress, we're going to continue to have problems. Do you think the U S is more um, prone to stress out our young women by the the pictures in the magazines and expect us to be that picture perfect. Yeah, I, I, that's a big problem. And that has been for a long time. Um, yeah. And I, I think even other cultures, it's, it's trending that way as well. Cause other cultures, they want to be like, like what we're doing in the U S as far as the food, the fast food and things. So we not only have that, but we have the fast food commercials and we have, it's, it's a perfect storm. And we have kids that, I mean, from a very young age, we have kids on social media 
and, and, and they're eating fast food and they're not moving. Kids aren't moving their bodies anymore. My, and I have two, I have two young boys who we have to tell them, go outside and play, go outside as a kid. I, that's all I wanted to do, but they would rather be on a screen playing a video game, you know? And it's like, it's so opposite how, um, you know, and I don't want to sound like that old, you know, oh, things aren't how they used to be, but we are very, it just goes back to what I said at the beginning. We're very distracted. We have all of these shiny objects all around us with technology and they, they're addicting, you know, and our, our little kids are are suffering from that. They're not moving. They're sitting in front of a screen because those screens, they know how to get us. (laughs) Do they still have in school for the younger students? Um, play time? I mean, um, gym or is it gym time now? They do. They, and they still have recess, but it's short. There's not, there's not a lot of time for it, you know? Um, not Mm -hmm. like it used to be. And, um, there, there are other things that they're trying, you know, they want to put them in, they want to have the art times, art classes, but there's only so much time when, a lot of the schools are still so focused. And right now everybody's playing catch up from right. having online school for so long, but right. um, they're so focused on achievement through the core subjects that kids aren't getting a lot of time to just play and mm-hmm. have fun. And it depends on the school. I've um, I found an awesome school for my kids this year that I, I love their approach, but you know, I, I am a former teacher and oh, we yeah. were trained to get kids to pass the state test. That's what we were trained to do. Yeah. And that's ultimately kind of what burned me out on teaching. Cause I was there to do what I do now, which is encourage and support. <laughs> you know, I, I went into it cause I wanted to help kids with their mental health, but in a different way, you know, like mm-hmm. let's, they could come sit with me at lunch well my principal wanted me to tutor them at lunch not just sit and give them a place to decompress and so you know so there's a lot of pressure on the school system and so I think there are a lot of changes that need to be made and they're happening they are happening yeah yeah um there's another uh change that we go through that I think it well it's a result of our food what we eat Mm -hmm. what we choose to eat I think you can correct me if I'm wrong but it's something called gut brain connection, mm-hmm. how our gut connects to our brain. I know it sounds crazy. How can they be connected? But they're so far apart. But <laughs> they are. Tell us how about that. Yes. This was something that really transformed my health when I learned about this. It was about seven years ago. I say, I'm like, wait, what, what's gut health? What is that? Well, right now it's a huge buzzword because in the last probably two decades, we have seen so much research poured into this topic. And I was speaking to a physician friend of mine recently, and he said, this is the next frontier. This is where all studies are going to be going for the next good 50 to hundred years is the whole idea of what does the gut microbiome do? And when I'm talking about the gut microbiome, I'm talking about your intestinal system because we actually have found that we're more, we have, I mean, we have trillions of bacteria in our body and some would say we are more bacterial cells than human cells and our gut and our brain are connected via a system called the vagus nerve and not vagus like Las Vegas, but vagus is spelled V-A-G-U-S. And it's, it stands for, I think the it's a Latin phrase for wandering. It's the wandering nerve. And so it starts at the base of your skull, travels down all the way to your intestinal system, but those nerve endings on the vagus nerve, it it connects to every single organ along the way. So it's the gut brain connection, but it's really the gut, everything connection, the brain, everything connection, everything is all connected through the vagus nerve. And so again, so our thoughts impact the way we digest food, but our digestion of food ultimately is going to impact what our brain health is made of, you know, and what neurotransmitters we are getting. And if we have bacteria in our intestines, that there's more of a bad bacteria balance than a good bacteria balance, then it's going to cause what we, we call it gut dysbiosis and it causes inflammation in the body. And wow, inflammation is a huge buzzword right now, especially when we're talking about severity of COVID and, and really any illness is going to depend on the amount of inflammation you have in your body, but it starts at the gut. And if we have a gut that has been continuously broken down by the food that we eat by processed foods, pesticides, any kind of environmental toxins, you know, I mean, 
there, there's a really awesome website, the environmental working group, they've gone and, and shown, um, what kind of cleaning products can be toxic for our gut health? What kind of, again, what kind of fruits and vegetables have been more heavily Good. sprayed with pesticides? Yes. It's important to be aware of that because yeah. all of those things, I mean, laundry detergents, those things can impact your gut health and your gut health impacts everything. It even impacts blood. I'm talking about blood sugar earlier. It impacts blood sugar. And it's, so it's just been so fascinating for me to learn about that and just to share with other people that we really, we can, for the most part, I mean, there are a lot of things we can't control, but we can control what we put in our mouth. We can control the choices that we make with our food to, to make sure that we have a hospitable environment for our gut so that we can produce the good bacteria, because the more good bacteria that we have, the better everything else is going to function. And so that's really been my focus the last seven years and beyond. And right now I'm going through even more training because I'm always learning and I'm going to um, the school of applied functional medicine right now, just to look more into the root cause of these issues and, and how to support people's mental health and wellness. And it starts in the gut. So what are some of the signs that we may have acting out in our systems that could tell us that we're having inflammation or poor brain gut <laughs> yeah. connection. I mean, lots of skin issues. It's interesting. It's, it's a lot of things that you, that many people wouldn't connect, <laughs> but skin issues, things like eczema, psoriasis, all the way to autoimmune illnesses, thyroid. Um, a lot of that is rooted in gut health. Um, like I mentioned, blood sugar issues, but then you have people with IBS and um, irritable, which is irritable bowel syndrome, or we have inflammatory bowel diseases that are wreaking havoc on a lot of people. And that is definitely gut level. And I will say I've worked with a lot of a lot of clients with irritable bowel syndrome. And I don't know if I've ever met anyone that has IBS that doesn't also have anxiety. They go hand in hand. Um, and then you have classic cases like celiac disease. That's where your, your intestines are really shot down. Um, it's an autoimmune disease where you cannot tolerate even a speck of gluten and it's yeah. just really toxic for your system. And so people with food sensitivities, that's another thing, you know, um, allergies, asthma, all of these things that are the big chronic diseases of our modern world that we have more so now than ever before really do have to do with our gut health and how, again, these conveniences of modern living that we love and we enjoy have maybe not been very health promoting for our bodies for all this time, like fast food and, you know, things like that. Okay. I'm going to use myself as an example here. I have, I'm gluten-free. I, it doesn't make me as sick as some people they, you know, but I know in my hands, if I've had gluten mm -hmm. and so it goes, eh, you're hurting. <laughs> and so I immediately get off of, I'm very careful about watching and eating gluten-free and the stores here are getting better about serving that product to us so that we can be honest and we're paying attention to this. But I also, within the last three months have had itching mm -hmm. really really so itching in the hair itching on my arm area and so when I have those symptoms who do I go to oh that's that's an interesting question well and that's why I do love functional medicine because it it has a different approach to um, health. It looks at the root cause. So what is causing that instead of going, well, let's just slap a cream on it. You know, let's try, try a different kind of cream to use, or it looks at, okay, what is your, what's going on inside your body? What are your labs looking like? What's your gut looking like? Are you, you know, and I love, I use a test. It's called a food inflammation test and it can tell not just food sensitivities, but what's actually causing inflammation in your body. And maybe we could do some more eliminating gluten is definitely a major trigger for probably most people. people. That's the biggest one <laughs> when it comes yeah. to any kind of weird symptoms in our body, but there's dairy. There are, um, my, I found out recently, my husband has a big issue with eggs. We used to eat eggs all the time, but it caught, they cause him a lot of problems and they're healthy, you know, eggs are healthy. So there are a lot of healthy foods that can cause problems for people too. But at the root of that, even if you go farther up at the root of that is having 
you know, a, a gut microbiome that has been compromised, right. that the intestines are supposed to be very tightly sealed whether they're, they're permeable now. And so now we have some toxins leaking out. We have all sorts of, um, inflammation being created from that intestinal per permeability. Anyway, that's causing us to be more sensitive to food than we have been in the past. So, right. yeah. So, I mean, but there, there are lots of different people that, um, that so are work you saying with that. I come to you or go to a dermatologist? You could do both. So that's what I love about functional medicine is it's just a compliment to, and what, even what I do as a health coach, it's just a compliment to the regular treatment that somebody is getting from another medical professional, because I think we need more than just one person. And that's what I found for my own health. I definitely needed in the past. I needed a psychiatrist. I needed a therapist, and then I needed nutrition support. And then I needed, you know, maybe I needed a personal trainer for a time. You know, it's like, we, we have so many different people with different specialties that can really help us target what we need for our unique body. But Aaron, I'm complaining. I'm the poor <laughs> guy out there that goes, okay, now I, who do I go to first? This, this one, this one. So that it's gotta be simpler than that for people mm. to pursue it. So, yeah. I mean, I've got a problem. So who do I go to? And, you know, I'm not, so I'm confused. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that it is. Yeah. I agree that I think that that does make it sound, um, complicated, but something that I really do try to stress with people is listen to your gut. You yeah. know, what do you, what do you think you need for me? Um, there were times in my life where I needed, because we do the, the medical system that we have in this country has been so helpful for so many people. And there are times that we need to see a traditional medical doctor, you know, but there are times when I'm like, well, gosh, I've been asking all these questions. They don't have answers for me. So now I'm going to go ask somebody else. So it really depends on the time. It depends on, you know, what you think your, the support your body needs, because if you're using all of the tools that you were given by just one person, it's, it's okay to look and ask for a second opinion, you know, right. and even beyond me, I am not the beyond be all and end all of, of health at all, you know? Um, but I think we have to be empowered to be our own health advocates. You know, I, I don't know your body, you know, I only know one body really well, and that's my body. And sometimes not even that, right. <laughs> and that's where that intuition has to come right. into play. And so yeah. I think that for everybody, we have to really just advocate for ourselves as best we can. And, um, because we do intuitively know what our bodies need when we lean in mm -hmm. and really start digging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Let's talk about another subject here. What about helping, why did you decide to take on, it, was it only after you, you became more aware of your needs and your development and how you got to a healthier place for yourself that you decided to help others or has this always been part of your makeup? That's a good question. Um, I've always, you know what I don't like? I'll, I'll tell you this. I don't like people being stuck. I don't like anybody being stuck where they are. Yeah. Um, I, I, it just, it's something that gets under my skin and I, I don't know how to explain it other than I don't want anyone to ever feel stuck or helpless. And I think, you know, that's probably one of my core beliefs that I've had since I was very, very young. I was a sick kid. I had a lot of ear infections and asthma issues. And one of my earliest memories is being held down for allergy testing. And so oh. one of my core beliefs is being helpless is that I'm helpless and there's nothing that I can do to get out of the situation. Right. I experienced trauma at a young age, watching my grandpa die. And I felt helpless. I couldn't yeah. help them. I couldn't help my mom. I didn't know what to do. He just died on my front lawn from anaphylactic shock. It was, it was terrifying. Wow. And so I have a lot of need to get unstuck mm -hmm. <laughs> because I don't want to feel helpless. So yeah. I don't want anyone to ever feel helpless. And so, you know, I, this isn't, you're not my therapist. This isn't a therapy session, but I think you just helped me uncover something that I hadn't really realized before, but I think my need to help other people just comes from my own need to not staying stuck. And even when I was experiencing, oh gosh, my mental health was, was rough from, probably about eighth grade into my 
till my early twenties, mm-hmm. it, it was just back and forth, different medications, not ever feeling right. And then I had to have the weird medication side effects. And then I would just oh, get really de- depressed and I couldn't even get out of bed. And then I would be soaring sky high. And then maybe I would be having hallucinations from the medications. I mean, it was just on and on, but I knew deep down inside, I was like, there has to be something else. There has to be something else. It's, and eventually I did find stability. You know, I ended up finding myself pregnant <laughs> At, at 22. Wow. Um, and that was kind of a, a really interesting time in my life where my symptoms seemed to have gone into remission during that uh-huh. pregnancy, which was kind of cool. And I know that that has happened for other people with chronic illness. Um, but that was a way for me to regain, to ground myself again and go, okay, where am I going from here? What am I going to do to be healthy so that my daughter can be healthy? <laughs> you know, what well, can I do to take care of myself? That's interesting. What does the body go through during that process, the, you know, of carrying a child that it needs that it doesn't have when we're not pregnant? Yeah, I've I've wondered that so many times. I don't know. It's weird. And even beyond during any time I was pregnant or breastfeeding, I was more stable mentally than I've ever been. And so it is something that I do think that that I did have hormonal imbalances at the root, but I think our bodies are protective. And so I think when we're, when we are, you know, carrying another life, our bodies go on extra alert. And so for me, that, that was something that just caused me to go, okay, we're good for a while. We're going to establish some healthy habits while we're here. And I, I think, yeah. And just going back to your original question, like, I, I just don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through. I don't want my kids right. to have to go through what I went through. And there were so many contributing factors, so many things that got missed. I had a horrible diet. I, I exercised. I was an athlete in high school after that, nothing. Um, and then I had a lot of immune system issues that went unchecked. I uh-huh. had a lot of sicknesses, a lot of antibiotic use. And we know that if we have persistent antibiotic use, it can really wipe out the good gut bacteria. And I don't it can like really antibiotics. Cause, <laughs> it can cause so many issues. Yes. So for, you know, so looking back, there were some things I needed my gut health to be in order and I never had been able to achieve that. And so it was going through that and really piecing together my own story that I realized, Oh, not everybody has to go through what I went through. There are other things we can do to get ahead of it. You know, again, the mindset, the food, the exercise, looking at immune function, all of that can can play a role. I I was just saying, I'm still hung up on the pregnancy thing, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but, um, there's also a mindset change in that yeah. period as well, isn't mm-hmm. there? Yeah. What is the mindset change? I was never, I've never been pregnant. Both my children are adopted. Aww. So tell me what, what would be one of the mental changes? Well, uh, a, a it's interesting. Yeah, maybe because for me, I was so self-destructive up to that point. I didn't care about my own body. I didn't care uh-huh. about taking care of myself. Uh-huh. I think it was when I saw the first sonogram and I was like, oh no, <laughs> I'm responsible for somebody else now. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, I think that yeah. was kind of, that was a mind. Cause it was an awful, it was an awful time in my life. It really was. It was not planned at all. It was not, right. um, a situation that it, it wasn't, you know, you're happy. Like it wasn't even a relationship situation. I was very right. self-destructive. I drank a lot yeah. of alcohol. I blacked out a lot because I was on medications that you're not supposed to drink alcohol on. Um, and yeah. so it was, it was a really, really awful time in my life. But mm-hmm. even with that, I mean, and I, I've got to say, I've got to attribute that to the grace of God, <laughs> you know, even yeah. with that, I, I felt yeah. a peace and I felt like, okay, I might not be able to get my act together for myself, but now there's this heartbeat going on. That's not mine inside my body. Now I got to get my act together. And yeah. so that was, that was a mindset shift too. Yeah. But it was yeah. a really difficult, I, I was, it was very isolating, very lonely. Uh, my dad was a pastor, always has been a pastor at um, mm-hmm. an evangelical church. And so mm-hmm. you want to talk about shame and how <laughs> whoo, <laughs> like, oh no, now I have the scarlet letter A on my sleeve, but it, it wasn't that way. It was very restorative. And I found that people, you know, uh, people often get down on, on church people as hypocritical and blah, blah, blah. But I was embraced with open arms by many people in my church. And so that, that was a neat experience. So that was, I went through a lot during that time. It grew me up real fast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see with my golden globe that 
with your love of writing, because you have written for several publications, and um, I didn't mention those, but what were some of them that were really, I thought, quite impressive? The Mighty yeah. Christian Parenting. Oh, no, mm -hmm. The Mighty, which I'm not familiar with that one. Christian Parenting. Mm -hmm. And also you're featured on You Who News and Den Who News. Mm -hmm. Denison Forum. Yeah, you must love to write. I do like to write. I, I like to just any kind of, like I said, I want to offer hope and I like to communicate. And I've always, I mean, my earliest career that I, goal of mine as a young child was I wanted to be a writer. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted, well, I think I wanted to be like a, like a dancer, actress, singer, writer, but that's a whole other. <laughs> All at the same time. <laughs> that's going to, yeah, I think so. I was like six and, you know, had big goals. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've always loved writing and, and that's creativity is, is helpful for me. Just putting even my thoughts and feelings, journaling is really important. And I think that that's a lost art for a lot of people because we have our electronics and yeah. just putting pen to paper is so important for our mental health. It's so important for our brain regulation. And even there are some things that happen with left brain, right brain. I mean, it's, I don't know all of the ins and outs of it, but I know that it helps. And so yeah. that's always been helpful for me. And so I do, I love writing. If I, you know, if I'm sharing about mental health tools or how to help manage stress, that's a big one. I think yeah. um, what was one of the ones in Yahoo it was about parents. It was about um, how to help it was right when the pandemic hit. That one was so surprising to me that it showed up in Yahoo. I was excited, um, but it was like, oh, okay. It was handling your mental health during the pandemic parents, handling your children's mental health. Sorry. That uh, was the, that yeah. was the article. And um, it was, it was neat to see and go, okay, so this is resonating with somebody. <laughs> now, the, your website, and I tell you, I had trouble getting in that website because I kept misspelling it. Oh, and it's a sp <laughs> sp I wanted to make it sparkling. Everybody does that. Yeah. And then one person said spanking. I was like, no, it is oh. not spanking wholeness. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> so yes. It does not go with who I am. Yeah. Uh, Sparkingwholeness.com. And you have many blogs on there that I thought, oh, I want to read that one. Oh. <laughs> so I really encourage people to go and read your blogs. They're very interesting. I had pulled out what's behind your anxiety, some mm -hmm. others like that that you had written. So they're, they're just about a page, a little bit more. So it's great. Uh, yeah, it's not great. a lot. I don't like to overwhelm people with information. <laughs> no, no. So uh, you also do coaching. Yes. And you, that's listed on your website as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I do virtual coaching. I also um, recently moved to Tyler, Texas, and I'm working yeah. at a place called Living Well Tyler. And we yeah. have counseling. We have, it, it's a neat, it's a really neat center. We have um, regular therapy counseling. We also have massage therapists. We have yoga. And then we have me doing nutrition coaching. Awesome. Yeah. So I suppose you would take another client, right? <laughs> yeah, they just yeah. have to call and sign up on the website. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a conversation with them first or? Yeah, it, de it do? depends. Sometimes I, you know, and I, I like to do a for anybody who's interested, I'm always willing to do a good 15 minute, 30 minute, just consultation, complimentary, just to see like, if we're even a good fit for each other, because there are some people that might not like my style. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a rule person. I'm not going to give people a do's and don'ts list on anything. I really look at what are you adding into your life to nourish yourself and nourishment does not just come from food. You know, nourishment comes from movement. Nourishment comes from reducing our stress. Nourishment comes from relationships. And from being, like you said, being outside and nature and breathing, you know, and so my style is probably different from others out there, but I also like to look at what are your thoughts about food and how does that impact digestion of food? Mm. You know, do you have many people have their own rules about food that's keeping them from making choices that would be healthy for them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, yes, so I, I do, I love to talk to people. Um, right now I am in school. So my schedule is a little more packed, um, than is your school here in time. It's virtual. Mm -hmm. it's, a oh, it's a virtual program. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yep. yeah. So, so you sound like you're pretty, you've got three children, a husband and, and do you do anything? He's a minister. So you 
you have to play the minister's wife. I'm he's sure. A, well, he's like, a counselor now. He, oh, he did ministry a for a long time, but now he's just a count, just a counselor. But yeah, we, yeah. um, he has taken a break from ministry and he's doing counseling okay. full time. So what yeah. kind of counseling, just therapy, just regular, uh, -huh. therapy. he's getting certified in a, in a trauma therapy this, this fall, but, um, yeah, just your regular talk therapy. And he, he specializes awesome. in adolescence and marriages. He's really big on marriage therapy and, um, yeah, and I'm biased, but I think, I think he's pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyler needs more therapists. They really do. Mm -hmm, I mean, for sure. our community is growing by leaps and bounds and the, the community of the, the family is suffering a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole unity of the family is really suffering. So yeah, it is. I'm glad he's here. You're yeah. here. Yeah, you we guess. love it. <laughs> yes. It was so interesting. I read uh, going to to uh, Aaron's website. It's going to be so much fun because she has great pictures of her family and her, and her husband. And uh, it was fun to hear her story about grow, growing up here. I mean, I didn't realize it before we interviewed, but it was so interesting that now you've re you come the full circle. You even chose to come back here. Mm -hmm. And isn't it kind of a fun community to be an yeah. adult in? It really is. Well, you know, my word of the year was I pick a word of the year every year. And this year, my word of the year was healing. And I ah. think it's kind of neat that I have gone back to the place where I experienced a, quite a few traumas and heartbreaks and grief. And some of my hardest life moments were spent in this city, but mm. now I'm back in a totally different way and hoping to encourage, you know, people in the community and, and yeah, and raising my kids here. I, I came from the Dallas area and it's crazy up there. You know, it's, we would have, my kids would make friends, but you'd have to drive a really long ways to oh, have the yeah. friends visit, you know, I mean, everybody's so spread out, but here, um, I, although I do say there's a vortex in the small town of Tyler because driving 15 minutes feels like 45. <laughs> it's not that far, but it feels like 45. Well, we so, do have uh, a traffic job. Uh, problem yes. Here. Yes, uh, that is true. Just there's some streets you never want to get on. <laughs> true. <laughs> <Never>. Yes. <laughs> or you choose your time. I would be curious to know if coming back to a, to a place that it caused you lots of trauma and pain and transition. Did you experience any of grief that you needed to go through having been back here? Yeah. It would seem very natural that you would. Yeah. But it's yeah. also very healing. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. I can get rid of that one, that one, that one. So mm -hmm. is did you find that in your yeah, in yeah. Day? Definitely. And I think one of the first times that I came back here, it was even before we decided we were moving before we lived here, I was driving down a street and I just had a flashback to a really rough period in college. And I remember it was a street I was driving down. I was like, oh my goodness, I think I drove down the street drunk once before. And yeah. that's such a, it's such a sad thing to, to go and go automatically the shame thoughts come in, you yes. know, like, yeah. oh, I can't believe I did that. I was so stupid. I was so young and self-destructive. Why? Did, and then I thought, no, you know what? That little girl was hurting. She was hurting and she had a lot going on that she needed to work through. And I'm not that little girl anymore. And wow. I have come a long way from that. Yeah. And so it, it's hard, you know, there, there are certain things, um, places that are probably bring back more bad memories yeah. than good memories. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of neuroplasticity <laughs> and training yeah. our brain, you yeah. know, and I just, I'm just creating these new memories and creating the new, um, what is it? Is it the new synapses or yeah. I don't remember even the, the new neural pathways, yeah, you know, to think yeah. about places in a new way with, with my family that I have here as, as a parent, I'm not a little kid and I'm not unstable, you know, I'm healthy. No. <laughs> you have grown a lot. Yes, exactly. You have a yeah. lot to offer. So if, if my clients, any of them would like to contact you, where would you want them to go? Yes. Um, sparkingwholeness.com, sparking, not sparkling <laughs> or not spanking, but sparkingwholeness.com is my website. Um, I'm on Instagram at sparkingwholeness. 
I, um, let's see, I'm I, living well, Tyler, if anybody is local and Tyler living well, Tyler is a good place to find me and you can meet me in person. Um, but yeah, those are my main forms of now, contact. Where are they located? Where's the spa then? Yes, is Living Well is south, well? almost to Flint. It is south of 49, um, off of a little road. And I can't remember what the name of Marsh Do we go Farms down or Broadway? Or yes, going down Jackson. Broadway. Mm -hmm. Broadway. Broadway. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Broadway. So, yes, that's important. Broadway, south, south of 49. Mm -hmm. So I suggest you do that. Not at five o'clock, not at noon. <laughs> <laughs> do it in the off hours <laughs> absolutely <laughs> don't go down Broadway sure. at those times <laughs> so I have a few questions I always like to ask my visitors um so what would share share a pitfall that you had that you can warn our listener about trying to avoid as they go on their journey to reheal Let's say they're realizing their body, they realize they're going through some of the stress and strain that we've talked about today and um, what you would encourage them to do when they realize they need a partner, a support. You know, I, I think the number one thing I would say is to stop um, beating up your own body just in the way you talk to your body, your body's not broken. Your body's on your side. Your body is always trying to protect you. And as I said, at the beginning, any of these negative symptoms, unpleasant symptoms that we have, typically it's your body just trying to recalibrate, trying mm -hmm. to restore balance and, and find a place of healing, even inflammation. We, we get inflammation because we're trying to heal. So we talk about these things like, Ooh, inflammation or Ooh, obesity or Ooh, fat, you know, but all of those things are protective mechanisms in the body. And yeah every single thing that we're going through that we think that we have to be up against. And now I got to beat my body in submission. And now I got to go against my body. No, you can work with your body and partner with your body for healing. And when you're in that headspace, that's going to make healing come all the more fast, all, all the more faster. That is horrible grammar. And I'm a former English teacher. Even <laughs> 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 your English teacher can, have I know it. all, all well, the, all the faster. <laughs> Okay. So what is your greatest success? Greatest success. Oh, man, that's hard because I'm one of those people that I'm always going for the next thing, you know? So uh -huh. it's really, it's hard to answer that question. I think, honestly, I will say my greatest success deep down inside the thing that comes to me is finding a place of of grounding in my brain and in myself to where I am at peace. I feel that I'm at peace with the way my brain functions with my body. Um, now body image and size and weight, that's a whole other topic. I think as a female, we're always going to be <laughs> struggling with that, but really finding peace with, with my past and with what I've been through, I've come a long way and I, and I want to be able to celebrate that. Yeah. I always love um, realizing that at the time we were experiencing whatever it was, negative, positive, we're always doing the best we can, you know, with the mm -hmm. moment. We're mm -hmm. doing the best. Now, it may not look the best to somebody else, but it would, on our journey, it's our best. And so giving ourselves some grace over some of this stuff is really needed. Mm -hmm. Now, I do know you have an, a wonderful freebie on your si um, site, website, that people can go and take advantage of. And what is that? Yes. So I have, I have a couple, but the one I really want to highlight, because I think it's so needed right now is it's a, just a little ebook, seven days to a sound mind. And mm -hmm. it's just seven days of meditations that are based on short little scripture passages. And for people oh. who are like, oh, I don't really do Bible stuff. It's really nothing that's going <laughs> to, it's, it's just good reminders right. that you are safe, right? Where you are, your body's on your side. And like you said, and you're, you're everybody, we're all just doing the best we can with what we have. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just a good way to just get, 
get your brain in the right place, you know, whether you want to read it before you go to sleep before, you know, when you wake up in the morning, but yes, I have that. I do have, um, some kids recipes, kid-friendly recipes on there as well, but this is one that I just feel like right now, um, it's something that we all really need to be reminded of. It's just to be grateful and grounded and, and having a positive outlook. Yeah. Meditation is so important for uh, everyone to do. Um, So, well, Erin, it's near the end. And I wanted you to know you have shared so many good ideas. You've really given us great information today. And you've given a solution to many of the things that we're challenged with in our transition. Um, I do think that the body is one of the main areas that most people need to uh, respect mm-hmm. and realize that God gave us an amazing place to house us, you know, our spirits. And I am amazed at how strong the body is and how it's created to come back mm-hmm. once it's given a little TLC uh, through food or exercise or whatever. So yeah. it's always working for us. <laughs> so <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> even mm-hmm. though I've abused it <laughs> so. and that's okay we all have yes. <laughs> so thank you very much for being on the second win because life is about taking advantage of our second wins so for you listeners out there wasn't she awesome did you not learn something that you had forgotten because of life and stress and just being on earth these days can be challenging. So I really want you to take time. You know, I always ask you to share the the podcast with a friend, but I really want you to share it on Facebook. I, I want you to share it out there because we need to know this information. And every one of us is suffering with some part of our body. I can almost promise that for you. So Let's go back. Maybe too much exercise, as Erin has said, or not enough exercise. Too much food, not enough food, of the right food. So great information here. I am so looking forward to seeing you on Second Wind next week. And I hope that this week is great for you, filled with many blessings and many happy moments. So to a great week. Thanks for being here today. Bye. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com.